Deaths from heart disease are surging globally and it's tragic because there are so many ways that we can cut our risks and one of the most powerful costs just $5.45 a month. But even though doctors like me recommend the strategy to our patients, online it's shrouded in controversy and we need to discuss this controversy so that you can make up your own mind about whether the strategy is for you or not. So what's the controversy? Well, the standard story you'll hear from doctors is that if our cholesterol, or more specifically our LDL cholesterol and ApoB levels in the blood are too high, then over time our arteries around the heart can become blocked and that can lead to a heart attack. But there's another story out there and it goes like this. The idea that high cholesterol is dangerous is a myth. It's being pushed by drug companies that are raking in billions selling people on cholesterol lowering drugs. Scientific evidence shows us that it's actually low cholesterol that's most dangerous to our health. And supporters of the story will point to studies like this one, which includes this graph showing the relationship between LDL cholesterol and all-cause death rates. The highest risks are seen with the lower LDL cholesterol levels. So what's going on here? Is there really some kind of conspiracy on the part of doctors and pharmaceutical companies to push unnecessary medications on patients? Well, the first thing to notice is that we see a U-shaped pattern in a lot of areas related to health. A meta-analysis on BMI in older adults, for instance, has a chart just like the one for cholesterol. So are we to believe that to be healthy, we should all aim to be overweight? And it's the same pattern for blood pressure. If there is a conspiracy, it seems to show up everywhere in medicine, but the actual explanation of this pattern has nothing to do with conspiracies or deception. Here's what's actually going on, and then we'll go through the $5.45 a month strategy to prevent heart attacks. People who fall on the very low end for metrics like cholesterol, body mass index, and blood pressure often fall into two categories, the elderly and the chronically ill. In old age, we start to see a lot more health problems, and they can impact these metrics. Think of body mass index, for example. As we reach advanced age, our appetite can decrease. We eat less, and so our weight goes down. So we're going to see lower body mass index levels. At that age, we're also going to see much higher mortality rates. A similar logic applies to the chronically ill. Very low LDL cholesterol levels can be caused by liver disease and cancer, not the other way around. But when studies are careful to correct for factors like old age and chronic disease that distort the results, we tend to see a different picture. Consider this example. A large cohort study looked at over 40,000 patients and overall death rates. The association initially looks like this. Notice the high death risk at the left side of the graph where the non-HDL cholesterol levels are lowest. But now have a look at the results after adjusting for age, malnutrition, and a number of other markers for poor health. The U-shape disappears and we now have a clear relationship between higher levels of LDL cholesterol and greater mortality risks. And consider sharing this video with friends and family who think that high cholesterol is a good thing. Now, what we've looked at so far are observational studies, but we want to widen our gaze to make sure that we aren't missing something or being led astray. So when we look at this review of over 200 studies, for example, that includes randomized clinical trials and involves more than 2 million people, we see a consistent link between higher amounts of LDL cholesterol in the blood and the rate of heart disease. The link is so strong that the study authors concluded that the evidence clearly shows that LDL cholesterol in the blood causes heart disease. But what if you're otherwise healthy? You'll hear online that if you're a perfect weight, you don't have diabetes or issues with insulin sensitivity, and your blood pressure is perfect, then we don't need to worry about blood cholesterol levels. Well, an important study called the PISA study answers this question. We can see that blockages in our arteries can develop if the LDL cholesterol in our blood is above 50 to 60 milligrams per deciliter, even if all of the other risk factors, such as insulin resistance, are perfect. So personally, I aim to have my LDL cholesterol levels below 50 to 60 milligrams per deciliter, which is an aggressive target. Many of us have a number much higher than this. One recent study found that even though levels among US adults have been falling, the average LDL cholesterol level in the population is about 112. So how do I reach the aggressive targets of 50 to 60 milligrams per deciliter? Well, the first thing we need to talk about is diet, but you'll want to listen closely because our understanding of the relationship between diet and blood cholesterol has evolved. Doctors have made big mistakes along the way, and the first mistake had to do with fat. 
Back in the 1950s, a scientist named Ansel Keys wanted to find out why some people got heart disease, and he did a big study in seven countries. He noticed that in places where people ate a lot of saturated fats, like butter and fatty meats, more people had heart problems. But in countries where people ate less of these fats, fewer people had heart disease. Because of these findings, doctors started telling everyone to eat less fat to stay healthy, and by the 1970s and 80s, low-fat diets had become incredibly popular. Many foods at the store had low fat on the package. But there was a problem. When food makers took out fat to make low fat foods, the food didn't taste as good. So they added lots of sugar and other things to make it taste better. So people thought that they were eating healthy foods, but they were actually eating more sugar. And that led to new health issues. It turned out that just cutting out fat wasn't making people healthier, especially when they ate more sugar instead. In fact, researchers found that increased sugar intake is linked to elevated risks of death from heart disease. And to make matters worse, in an effort to replace butter, early versions of margarine were made using a process called hydrogenation. This turns liquid oils into solid fats and creates trans fats. Now trans fats are a type of fat that has since been shown to be incredibly harmful, increasing the risk of heart disease much more than saturated fats. So while many people were following doctors' advice, thinking that they were making positive of changes, they were actually making their health worse. And it's important to acknowledge this mistake. Modern forms of margarine no longer include trans fats, but it's important to recognize this historical error. And there's another error which I'll address shortly. So we want to avoid trans fats, but we also want to avoid saturated fats, which are typically found in fatty cuts of meat, full fat dairy, coconut oil, and palm oil. They've all been shown to increase our levels of LDL cholesterol in the blood. And when we replace saturated fat with unsaturated fat, we reduce heart disease by about 17%. And this is the second error that needs to be addressed. The fat-free craze made many people wary of unsaturated fats found in things like extra virgin olive oil and avocados. But when a large study called the Cordioprev study compared a low-fat diet to the Mediterranean diet that had unsaturated fat, Fats. It found that the group eating the unsaturated fats had about a 25% lower risk of heart attacks compared to the low-fat group. The final mistake we need to address before I talk about the $5.45 a month strategy to reduce heart disease is the link between cholesterol levels in our blood and cholesterol in our diet. Cholesterol in our foods and saturated fat are different. So while the evidence suggests that we want to avoid saturated fat, Dietary cholesterol from eggs, for example, only have a small effect on the cholesterol levels in our blood. That's why the authors of this article, summarizing the research, conclude that for most people, eggs can be enjoyed as part of a healthy, balanced diet. But being careful about our diet can only do so much. Sometimes my patients are eating right, but they still find that their LDL cholesterol levels are above the 50 to 60 milligram per deciliter target. And here's where the $5.45 a month strategy comes in, which is low dose statin medications. But according to many YouTube channels and blogs, statins cause dementia. Now, this concern has been conclusively disproven in many clinical trials, and I have a whole video about statins and brain health here. The latest clinical guidelines actually suggest that the use of statins is associated with a reduced risk of dementia. Statins also don't affect testosterone levels, and muscle pains are rare, about 1-2 to two patients out of 100, and those risks are even lower if we stick to low-dose therapy, which is what I use in the clinic. And you'll see in the comment section of this video people talking about muscle aches. This tends to happen if high doses are used, or if hydrophobic statins, such as atorvastatin and simvastatin are used, those can get into the muscles. Instead, at the clinic, I use rosuvastatin and pravastatin, which are hydrophilic and can't get into muscles. Plus, about 80% of the LDL cholesterol lowering effect can be achieved with low-dose statins compared to high-dose. So with the risks and myths of low-dose rosuvastatin addressed, what are the benefits of using rosuvastatin? Well, if 1,000 people are treated with a statin for 5 years, 18 would avoid a heart attack. But here's the really cool thing. That risk reduction is only after 5 years. The protective benefits get even stronger the longer that we're on statins. So it's important to look at our lifetime risks rather than a 5-year risk. Personally, I take rosuvastatin 5 milligrams, and in the USA, it's available for only $5.45 a month at costplusdrugs.com. But what if low-dose statins aren't enough to reach the LDL cholesterol targets? Well, the next step that I discuss with my patients is to add ezetimibe. Ezetimibe works by telling our gut to not absorb as much cholesterol. This is important because when the body digests fat, 
Bile is released into the gut, and bile is rich in cholesterol, so by blocking the amount of cholesterol that's reabsorbed from the gut, we can lower our blood cholesterol levels. It's a very well tolerated medication, and only a small minority of patients experience some tummy upset, and that usually resolves with time. And adding azetamibe to low-dose statin treatment is a better option than simply cranking up the dose of statins. A recent meta-analysis showed that combination therapy lowers blood cholesterol levels more and is tolerated better. But medications and diet, as powerful as they are, aren't the only tools that we have to reduce our heart disease risks. So remember plaque in the arteries that I talked about earlier. Some groundbreaking new studies have found that we can actually reverse this deadly buildup. The key is exercise, but not just any kind of exercise. So make sure to check out this next video here that goes through all of the latest research about how to clear plaque from our arteries using exercise.